It's day three of our December five day weight loss series. And today we are putting the fun in functional. We don't need any equipment at all. So let's go. All right, killer bees, let's go ahead and get moving and grooving. And that means that we are getting started with some arm circles with high knees. You guys, oh my gosh, I'm falling out of the first one. <laughs> Welcome to the workout. I'm Paula B. I'm your best middle-aged fitness friend. And around here, we are all about making peace with our menopausal body by finding a healthy weight and moving in ways that feel like self-love. And you guys, you know what really feels like self-love? Losing weight with the 5-0 method where we do five things every single day consistently that get us to our goal. Number one is eating the right number of calories. It's not necessarily less. Number two is drinking the right amount of water. It is half your body weight in pounds in ounces of water. Number three is getting the right amount of sleep every night, which means that we're going to bed at the same time every night and getting up at the same time every morning. And we're not really worrying about how much of that in between there was actually sleep. <laughs> we are also exercising moderately with super fun workouts like this one today. And maybe most importantly, we're managing our mind by finding our thoughts and deciding if they are helpful. Let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. And today's helpful thought is this one. This is interesting. <laughs> because here's the thing, today's workout, it's interesting. <laughs> It may or may not be fun. It is definitely going to be effective. It may or may not feel like much while we're doing it. Today, I'm calling this thinking cardio. And the reason I want you to think about it as interesting, because do you notice how that word, really specifically interesting, kind of opens you up to curiosity? I'm curious what we're doing today. You don't have the same sort of expectation from it like, oh, this is gonna be sweaty, or this is gonna make me feel strong, or this is gonna be fun, or whatever. When it's interesting, it opens you up for a very different kind of experience. And that, that really is what it's gonna be today. Today is interesting. <laughs> I've got the handy dandy gym boss here, set for intervals of 20 seconds, and we are going step stool style. Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes, because welcome to my home, which means that there's actually going to be a fair bit of rest today. Today is, is probably some of the gentlest cardio we're going to do, and that's a good thing. Having different levels of cardio, different variations of the way we do things, can really help you get your brain involved in your workout too. So a step stool means that we're gonna do one exercise and then rest. And then we're gonna do that same first exercise, but we're gonna add something else onto it and then rest. And then we're going to do three exercises in a row. So the work interval does get a lot longer as we go. And let me just tell you right now, we're gonna go ahead and start with walking because walking is one of the most functional things we do as human beings. Being upright, balancing on one foot at a time very quickly in succession, pulling in our core and being like this, moving forward. It's something that we do every day and yet we kind of take it for granted. And today, because this is thinking cardio, here's 20 seconds of rest and we're just going to do some Robert Palmer's here. We're just going to tap a little bit from side to side, keeping your heart rate going, but it doesn't need to be high. When it beeps again, we are walking again and we're going to do Papa squats, which is not a full squat. It's, it's a cardio squat where we kind of get down and we kind of get up. I like to think about it like we're talking to a small child. So here we go with walking. Look, we're talking to a small child and then we're excited about what they say. <laughs> and that really is the crux of our thinking cardio today. We're not going to get a million steps. We're not gonna get super sweaty. This is not the craziest cardio we've ever done. This is the kind of cardio where we are thinking about what our body is doing. Pop a squat. We're just squatting a little and then our hands are up. A little bit down, a little bit up. A little bit down, a little bit up. Feel that work in your booty. Feel your body doing a very natural movement. You guys, when it beeps again, we're gonna get 20 seconds of rest, and then we're gonna complete the entire step stool. Ah, <sighs> see, there was plenty of work. <laughs> You notice how it always builds up those longer intervals, even, even when it's thinking cardio, we're still doing cardio. Okay, so the entire step stool, we're doing walking plus the Papa squats, plus something I call ski jumpers, which means that we're gonna squat it down and we're gonna come up on our toes. So here we go back with our walking. That ski jump is very functional. Coming up on your tiptoes, balancing like that, not something that we do every day, but that proprioception of knowing where your body is in space and time on a very 
small part of your body, here we go with Papa squats, is something that we can't really do other than that. The ski jumpers is actually very, very similar to Papa squats. It's literally the same kind of squatting motion. But as we come up from that Papa squat, we're going to come up on our toes. It's just 20 seconds. It's the shortest part of the step stool. It's the one that we only have to do. Here we go with those ski jumpers coming up on your tiptoes. How long can you hang there on your tiptoes? When it beeps again, we're getting 20 seconds of rest. And then we're moving on. Yes, there's some, some repeating, but we're not repeating the step stools. So once we've done all three exercises, 20 seconds of rest. Yeah, see, there we go. There's our cardio part. <laughs> You guys, when it beeps again, we're moving on to another step stool. And I'm just going to tell you right now that all of our step stools start with walking. Truly the most functional exercise that we could possibly do. And I love to be able to do it here, where we, here we go with our walking, where we can talk about stuff too. I mean, what's better than walking and talking, right? <laughs> You guys, no sooner did I become a certified personal trainer than the very next thing that I did was get another certification. My second, and frankly, my favorite certification, and here we go with 20 seconds of rest, is as a functional fitness specialist. I loved learning about the normal functional movement patterns that we have as human beings that we use in life. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna do walking plus something I'm calling ankle jacks. Our hands are gonna be doing jumping jacks. Here we go with our walking part. Our hands are gonna be doing jumping jacks and you're gonna bring one knee up as high as you possibly can. Like really take that second to pull it as high as you can and see if you can touch both hands to both sides of your ankle. I know, <laughs> this is why it's thinking cardio. We're really thinking about that balance, about pulling that knee up and really squeezing that extra, that extra couple of inches to see how high you can get it. Now, of course, it's not that big of a deal if you actually touch your ankle. And I would much rather you have your knee come straight up than out to the side. So wherever you can touch with your knee coming straight up in front of you, and then here's 20 seconds of rest. Having that knee pulled up that little, little extra. Cause you know when we pull up a high knee, it's like, okay, well yeah, I got my foot up off the ground. But when you're trying to squeeze that little bit extra, that my friends is where we really work those deep core stabilizer muscles. Having that, that little extra makes all the difference. Here we come back to walking. Coming up next, of course, is gonna be those ankle jacks. And then we're adding on something I call top shelf tiptoes. <laughs> And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's as though we are reaching for something on the top shelf. Whichever hand is reaching, that foot is gonna come up on tiptoe. Okay, so here we go with those ankle jacks again. Squeeze, really squeeze, pull that knee straight up rather than out to the side, wherever you can reach to really feel that work. Trying not to curl down forward, but to bring the knee up high. When it beats, we're doing those top shelf tiptoes. If you'd like to stay balanced with that other foot on the ground, that's totally okay. I'm gonna try and do a flying version. Top shelf tiptoes. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's extra, extra balancey. And that is the point, my friends. The more we practice balance in small 20 second intervals, the better we will get at balancing. <sighs> 20 seconds of rest every day. And we'll be able to have that balance to call on when we need it in the world, as opposed to just doing something fun where it's totally okay if you've got the, you know, your hand on a wall or a chair. You guys, ha, huh, that was our second step stool. And now we're moving on to our third one. You know what we're gonna start with? We're gonna start with walking the most functional thing in the world. <laughs> I'm gonna start singing it because it's so good for you. Do you know that this movement, this thing, is part of what makes us human? The ability to stand upright and move forward, it's unusual. I mean, look around, <laughs> look around <laughs> at all of our furry friends that have four feet that stay close to the ground. Our ability to be upright and balanced is uniquely human. When it beeps again. We're doing walking, of course. And we're doing something I call speed skaters. Now here's the thing about speed skaters, really specifically, here we come back to walking. You could, if you wanted to, jump. I'm not going to, but you could. This will depend on where you are with your personal fitness and weight loss journey. 
I don't love to jump <laughs> very much. I do some jumping, but it's not my favorite thing anymore. It is functional though. But speed skaters, basically, it's like we're doing flying windmills. You're reaching for your opposite hand, or your opposite hand is reaching for your opposite foot, but we're flying that back foot so that you are really balancing in a lateral motion rather than tapping back like we do with windmill tap backs. Ah, here's 20 seconds of rest. Okay. You feel all that work in your core? You feel all that work in your brain? <laughs> I know. This is interesting, you guys. When it beeps again, we're adding on. I'm going to tell you right now. Leg twister jacks. Your leg goes out. Your leg goes in. Your other leg goes in. Your other leg goes out. We're going to start with walking. The thing about leg twister jacks, it, it, took me, it took me so long to get these right. <laughs> I like to think about your foot traveling across your body. So it's out, it's in, it's in, it's out. And then we come back in, and then we're in, and then we're out. I, however you need to think about it, first of all, we're doing speed skater. So you've got plenty of time to like think about it. So skating by adding, reaching your opposite hand down towards your opposite foot, flying that other leg back. Your arms are going to be doing jumping jacks. If you would rather not do the jumping jack part with your arms, totally okay. Just move your legs. It is all about figuring out where your body is in space and time. So out, twist in, twist in, twist out. Then in again, in and out. I'm going to say it the whole time. In and in and out. In in and out. The movement going across your body and then we're done. And then we never have to do those again, or at least not in this workout. Thank goodness. <laughs> Here's 20 seconds of rest. Hey, you know what? That was our third step stool. And we're going to start number four with, yeah, walking. I know. I know because it's so good for us. You know, one of the big, biggest questions that I get, here we go with walking. One of the biggest questions that I get is about how I exercise barefoot, whether or not you should exercise barefoot. And I will tell you that you absolutely never need to. You never need to do anything that I do, ever. The way that I do it, how I do it. I always, always, always want you to make every workout work for you. The reason why I like to work out barefoot, here's 20 seconds of rest, when it beeps again, we're doing walking, and then we're gonna pair that with upside down jacks, where we're challenging our balance from side to side. That one is a little kinder and gentler, that it's not as much thinking, but you really are moving, you're transferring your center of balance off to the side a little bit. So here we go with walking. The reason why I like to work out barefoot. Number one, I just like to be barefoot. <laughs> like it's truly a personal preference. But the reason why I even started working out barefoot was because I, many, many years ago at this point, like 13 years ago, 10 years ago, long time ago, don't remember when. Here we go with upside down jacks. So your hands are doing jumpy jacks and we're stepping out wide enough to the side that we're really transferring our center of balance whew, off to the side, really thinking almost like a lunge off to the side without having to bend your knee, but really thinking about where your balance is. Your balance, my friends, belongs right in your belly. And then here's 20 seconds of rest. Thinking about your center of gravity being in your center can help you balance no matter where you are, no matter where your legs are, no matter where your arms are, no matter what you're doing. If you're thinking about the work being right here in your center, it will help you keep you help keep you centered. <laughs> Okay, when it beeps again, we're doing walking, of course, because that's what we do. The reason I started working out barefoot, I had terrible balance. I still do, but it has gotten significantly better when I took off my shoes. Now, you will notice that your balance is actually better with shoes on because your shoes are doing a lot of the stabilizing for you. Here we go with those upside down jacks. What happened to me was that I didn't know I had bad balance because I was always wearing shoes, but I was getting injured a lot because my shoes were doing a lot of the work for my body. When it beeps again, by the way, we're adding twisting kicks. It's exactly what it sounds like. Our torso is gonna twist. Our lower body is gonna be doing kicks one leg at a time, of course, because otherwise we'd be jumping. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't even know how you'd kick with both legs at the same time. Really thinking about pulling in that core, twisting your whole torso wherever your spine can get to, not just moving your head or trying to move your shoulders over, but really thinking about twisting from your middle, from your center of balance. And then here's 20 seconds of rest. So when I took off my shoes and tried balancing, you guys, that was the end of step stool number four. We're moving on to number five with walking, of course. 
I, I get it, I got injured all the time. And it wasn't like foot or ankle injuries. I mean, one time it was, I twisted my ankle one time. So here we go with walking. But it was, it was like weird injuries that didn't seem to be related to balance until I went to a functional specialist who had me sit on one foot and was like, Paula, what, what's going on with you? I mean, I literally, I picked up one foot and fell over. That's how bad my balance was. Here's 20 seconds of rest. Okay, <laughs> the thing that we're adding on, I'm gonna get back to that functional specialist story in a second. Okay, we're gonna walk with our next little thing, our next interval is walking, and then we're gonna do something I call duck and swoops. And I'm saying it really slowly like that because if I say it faster, here we go with walking. If I say it faster and you don't know that it starts with a D, it could sound like something very different. Like am I autocorrect? <laughs> Knows that I'm almost never saying ducking, but I am here. I really am. We're going to duck and swoop. So it's like a squat, but it's a squat where our torso is moving to the side. So feet are wide. We're ducking and swooping, ducking and swooping. You can tap your foot if you'd like to duck and swoop, duck and swoop. <laughs> I do indeed crack myself up, you guys, when it beeps again. We are going to get 20 seconds of rest. Now this, you noticed, ah, that was a little deeper squat. I know, we felt that. Having your feet wider, squatting a little bit lower, working all kinds of muscles in your inner and outer thighs that don't always work when we're doing just kind of our regular stuff. But if you ever needed to duck, in a situation, here we go with walking, you would be totally capable. That's why we practice. You guys, coming up next, duck and swoops. And then we're adding on our third exercise, which is cross back jacks. The thing about cross back jacks, it is essentially a curtsy lunge. We're stepping back and out to the opposite side, but you do not need to actually do a full curtsy. Here we go with duck and swoop, duck and swoop, duck and swoop. If you would like to do a full curtsy, you absolutely may. If you would prefer not to because your knees don't love to do any kind of squatting or lunging like that, well, we're already doing some squatting, but if you would rather, here we go with cross back jacks. Hands are doing jumping jacks. Lower body is doing something like a curtsy jack or a curtsy curl. Nope, not even a curtsy curl, a curtsy lunge. <laughs> Those are the other things that we do with curtsies. <laughs> Whatever works for you always works for me. And here's 20 seconds of rest. Remember when I told you that we were going to get our heart rate up, even though it was thinking cardio? I think my heart rate is up. And you guys, that was the end of step stool number five. We've only got one more and it's starting right now with some walking as soon as it beeps. We've got, okay, we've got some super fun stuff with this one. <laughs> we're walking. <laughs> And then we get a little bit more rest. The great thing about any kind of movement, I know lots of us, I'm telling you, oh, this is a weight loss workout. And you're like, okay, we're going to get really sweaty. We have to do a lot of work. The great news about doing any work, and I mean this literally, any work at all. Here's 20 seconds of rest. When you move your body and then you continue to move your body, even slowly, even like meandering, gentle thinking cardio, when you keep moving your body, your heart rate keeps coming up. You guys, when it beeps again, we're doing walking, of course, and we're doing one of my favorite things in the whole wide world, forward hinge arm flappers. Here we go with the walking. The reason I love forward hinge arm flappers, first of all, it's just a silly name. It went in doubt, I like a silly name, but also it's a cleverly disguised deadlift. And deadlifts are one of the most functional exercises that you and I could do. The reason it's so functional, because we are using our glutes. Stick that butt back behind you, pull it back forward, butt back behind you and pull it forward. Your hands are doing jumping jacks, but your booty is getting strong back there. <laughs> your booty is doing some real good work driving this arm flapper train when it beeps again. Of course, we're going to get 20 seconds of rest as we do doing the little Robert Palmer's not especially functional, but lots of fun and makes me think of addicted to love, which I'm not going to sing because I don't want to get a copyright strike, <laughs> but I know you can picture it. Those girls with the slick back hair. That's why I call them Robert Palmer's <laughs> when it beeps again. You guys, we are finishing up our sixth and final step stool with, first of all, we're walking. Absolutely. Then we're going to do those forward hinge arm flappers. Then we are doing something I'm calling high knee bicycle signals. 
I'm going to explain it more after we're doing the forward hinge arm flappers. Essentially, we're thinking about bicycle signals like I'm stopping and I'm turning and I'm stopping and I'm turning. And while we're doing that, here's our forward hinge arm flappers. While we are doing bicycle signals, we're going to be bringing up one high knee at a time. We're doing this as quickly as possible, but I really do want you to think about where your shoulder is, how you're pulling that work from the middle of your back. It's very functional for your shoulder movement. This is actually, I'll be honest with you, it's physical therapy. <laughs> Sometimes we do that. Bicycle signals with high knees. You guys, when it beeps, oh, when it beeps, we are done. We are not finished. We're gonna do some balancing. I'm gonna start with my left foot on the ground. We're doing something I call I, Y, W, and parade rest. Gonna get some more shoulder work here. Left foot down on the ground, I with your hands. Y with your arms. W with your arms, pull those elbows down, and then parade rest. Yes, we're sitting on one foot the entire time. If you don't wanna do that, can't do that. You don't have to put your foot down down, pick it back up again, do whatever balancing works for you. My friends, as it happens, here we go on the other side, as it happens, I've been doing this for a while. When that doctor, oopsies, I wasn't doing bicycle signals, when that doctor was like, Paula, what is wrong with your balance? I started practicing every day. I started practicing barefoot. I started walking around my house barefoot. That barefoot work, and that was it. Oh my gosh. That barefoot work got me to where I am today. That functional fitness helped me get better. Now let's go ahead and do some arm circles and cool this down, my friends. It was thinking cardio, but it was still cardio. And here's what I want you to know. Barefoot work does not work for everybody. You are absolutely the best judge of what works for you. And if you have any questions, ask your doctor. Just because it happened to be what was best for me does not mean that it was best for you, which is how I feel about literally every single exercise we do. Some of them are gonna work for you. Some of them are gonna feel like your body just isn't quite there. And that's interesting, isn't it? You guys, what a great day we had. Let's go ahead and open that up. Ah, nice big deep breath. And then let's give yourself a hug. Oh, and a pat on your moderately sweaty back because this was so beautifully moderate and thinking and cardio that this is the kind of thing, my friends, that we could do again and again and again, just like we do with the Vivo method every single day. We exercise moderately. It's definitely not especially more than you used to do. It's just right. My friends, we've still got, what is today? Number three. We've still got two more days of this December five workout series, and I am excited about them. Before you go, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow.